Hello and welcome to episode 6 of my building through the terrain tutorials in Lord of the Rings Battle Games in Middle Earth. Episode 6 takes me all the way through to magazine number 7 because, or number 8 even. No, let me start that again. Hello and welcome to episode 6 of my building through the terrain tutorials within the Lord of the Rings Battle Games in Middle-earth magazines, those classic magazines from many years back. Episode 6 brings me through to magazine number 7, which is a, a brilliant magazine actually, I have, I have a read through it, but the specific modelling workshop that I'm going to be doing is Walls and Fences and it's going to be a slightly more advanced version in the magazine of what they showed previously when we did the hedges and the fences. Um, but this time uh, it's, uh, it's making walls and it's showing how to combine some of those techniques. And of course, as usual, I will also do a slightly different technique than what's shown in this magazine, and you can hopefully learn a little bit from that as well. So I'll point the camera down at my bench, which is behind the camera now, and we will go through the build and get started. Right then, here we are at the bench with the modelling workshop in front of us for walls and fences. Let me read the introduction. Making walls and fences is relatively easy and they are a useful addition to your scenery collection. When placed on the table, they will suggest that your battlefield was located in one of the civilised realms of Middle-earth. The way they affect movement, shooting and combat will also provide many challenging tactical situations. This is very true. So what we're going to do is we're going to make up the wall as it is in this workshop and also as I say later on I will begin showing you my more advanced technique. The materials and tools it says you need is a craft knife, a steel rule and a cutting mat. Craft knife, steel rule, cutting mat. I also use a standing knife as I find it that little bit more uh, solid and that it cuts a bit better. Uh, PVA glue, yep, always a PVA glue. Thick card, super glue just over there, thin card just behind me, modeling flock or static grass all over the place and I'll link to in the description to my video about how to make your own modeling flock. Scissors right here, pan scarers just over there, a large paintbrush, balsa wood, small pebbles and stones and masking tape. So it's a pretty standard list. We'll start off with step one right now in this take and then move on as we go. So what it says is start with the main wall section as you will take some measurements from this later on. Using a steel ruler, draw two rectangular shapes on your thick card that are approximately an inch wide and six inches long or two centimeters, 15 centimeters. Then using your scissors, I will use my standing knife, carefully cut them out. Finally, stick them together side by side using PVA glue. This forms your basic wall shape. So here we have a tab, which has been taken off of a cardboard box. It's a bit battered, but it should be okay. Don't think it'll be a problem. And what we're going to do is we're gonna get my pencil, which you didn't say you needed, but obviously you do because you want to draw stuff. And we're gonna put a mark an inch here. And we're gonna make another mark, another inch up here. And we're gonna make another mark, another inch up here. And that's that. And then we're going to do the same thing at this end and then we can join them together. So an inch there, an inch there, an inch there, and we'll have one slightly odd shape, but that's fine. So what we'll do is we'll draw those lines across. So now that we've got our lines, I'm going to get my safety cutting ruler here and I'm going to use my Stanley knife to cut these out. Now I prefer using a knife for cutting thick card because it doesn't cause the card to blow or be damaged as much. The size of scissors going through a length of card can cause the card to actually bend around the handles and around your hands and that isn't what I want to do here. We have three sections of card, longer than six inches, wouldn't you know? Doesn't that work fine? Huh. But so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna mark six inches along and then cut these down. So now we're going to glue these together. And to do that, I'm gonna get my PVA and I'm going to put a little amount on, smear it around, and then stick them together and leave them. 
So we'll put a little bit of PVA, not too much. A little bit of PVA again, not too much. Add a little bit of PVA there. And we will smear it around because it will make a good bond. And if you have a small amount, it dries much quicker than if you have a large amount. So there we are. We will stick that together and put that to one side. Then we'll stick this one together and pop it to one side. Ta-da! And then we will stick this one together. Like so. There we are. That is step one. I will let them dry and I'll be back very shortly to do step two. Okay, we're ready for step two, the base. In order to join several wall sections together and create convincing corners, we suggest you follow our examples for the bases. Cut a rectangular shape approximately 15 centimeters, six inches by three centimeters or one and a half inch out of thin card. Using your wall as a guide, mark out where you want to cut the corners. Next, use a craft knife and cutting mat to cut out all the corners. Don't stick the wall to the base just yet as you will need it for a few more measurements. So what else do I suggest that you do here is that you cut one and then you use it as a template. So we will, I have a section of thinner card here as you can see, there's my glued together wall. We will take this steel rule and mark six inches along this top edge here. There we are, six inches to there. We will then mark one and a half inches as it suggests here, and one and a half inches as it suggests here. And we will also cut, uh, draw that. There we are, six inches. And then I'm gonna use my craft knife, or rather my Stanley knife to do all these cuts because it's gonna be better. And what we'll then do is we'll shape it and then we'll use that as a template and I'll cut a number of, of sections out of this so that we have plenty of bases because I'm actually making three or four of these as it happens. So first of all, let's cut all the way across there at six inches. Let's just make sure that that is six inches. That will make it a lot easier for me to handle what I'm trying to do here. Yes, let's just cut that all the way across. There we are. Right the way down there, done. And then we'll cut the tab off, and then we'll cut the three inch, like so. Okay, with that cut, what we're going to do now is we're gonna set our wall in place. And if you can see here, the shape they're suggesting is that you bring it back a bit, like so, and then at an angle, like so. Back a bit like so, and at an angle. So I might do that a little bit more organically than they've done it. Make it a bit more curved, but it'll have the same effect. And this is gonna be the template, as I say, so we can get it exactly the same every time. So I'll take my knife and I'll cut those. There we are, we have our base. So that will stick on there nicely, and so will the other one, and so will the other one. There we are, perfect. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna cut some more of those bases out so that we have plenty, and I'll be back with another step shortly. The next step is to make some tiles. Using the top of your wall as a guide, <coughs> mark out a rectangle on your thin card. Now what I've got here is some black card, which was actually in a pack that was uh, bought for Rosie to use, but we don't want to use, she's using all the other colors, uh, but black is not one that she's gonna be painting on. So I've just been given that just now. So I'm gonna use the black card. Make it as long as your wall section is slightly wider than the top of the wall by a small amount on each side. Once you've cut this out, cut it into blocks that are roughly square. You don't have to stick these tiles on just yet. There are a few more things to do first. So I'm gonna go about doing that now. I'm gonna cut that out and uh, make them into rectangles. So first of all, I'm going to get my pencil 
and I'm going to mark roughly the width. And I'm using the squares that are on my cutting mat to help me guide that. So the width of this is roughly one centimeter. So what I'm actually going to be doing is making this so that it is about two centimeters wide. Because what I can always do is I can always trim it down after I've cut it out. So it's going to be about two centimeters wide and it's going to be as long, they're going to be as long as my, uh, as my tops. So I'm going to cut that and I'll get my knife. The sun is coming in at rather a difficult angle for filming this morning, which is okay. I'd rather have the sun not, but it is a bit glaring. And that will fit nicely on top of the wall, as you can see, as a tile. So I'm going to um, continue doing this and I'll show what it looks like when it is finished. As you can see, I've cut up quite a lot of two centimeters by three centimeter squares out of the black cardboard. However, while I was doing that, and I was looking at this picture on the back here, and I was seeing that it looks very much like that's quite a thick, well, not messily thick, but it's certainly thicker than that card. Now, I also have this material here, which is very thin foam. And so what I'm gonna do is, as an experiment, I'm going to cut that in its two centimeter by three centimeter thicknesses. And if that looks like it's gonna be a better option, then I'll make use of that card there to make the bricks, which is the next step anyway. I think it will look a little more realistic. That's very, very thin card, and it doesn't really, it's not really gonna look like so much like uh, blocks on the top as just nothing, basically. And this will be a little more substantial and potentially look a little more realistic. So we'll take a Stanley knife and our safety cutting ruler, and we will cut that into two making use of the markings on the cutting mat again. Very useful they are indeed. And we'll cut that into two. And that should also leave the second one too because that was a six centimeter. There we are. So what we'll then do is we will take this and we will cut them at three centimeters. Simple as that. So what I'm gonna do is continue with this, cut all of these up and then I'll be back with the next step. But I think this is a much better idea. I think these already, I'm happier. They will also be slightly easier for me to weather and damage and make it look a little more interesting. Whereas the card potentially might, it's just a little bit too flat. And I may end up needing to cut some more of this. I might not have had enough, but I've got quite a lot. This is just, I think it's um, three mil or something, three mil foam. So yes, I'm going to do that, get enough for that. I think I'm going to cut them for all. It's going to look much better on top there. Yep. And I'll be back with the next step. What I am now going to do is start cutting up the bricks. It says make your brick sections by cutting some more card into lots of little brick shaped tiles and make loads, it says, because they'll be useful for future modeling workshops. So I'm not going to do this on camera because all I'll do is cut and cut and cut. I'm just going to sit and in breaks during work, which I have a few at the moment, I'm going to just slice it up into small sections and I'll show you what they look like when I have a big pile. Right, we have bricks and we have our tops. Okay, so what it says now is using PVA glue, this is step four, stick the wall to the base, then wrap some masking tape around the ends of the walls to hide the corrugations. Now stick the tiles to the top, leaving a, sm a few small gaps between each tile. Finally, stick a few bricks on each side and leave it all to dry. So it suggests that we do this all at once. Now I'll probably suggest that you don't. I would suggest that you probably do this in a minute here and a minute there. First of all, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to glue the base glue this to the base with a bead of PVA in the traditional manner as I keep saying what would we do without PVA and I'm actually going to leave that to dry because I don't want to fiddle with it and I only have a minute now anyway so that's perfect and then I'm going to do the same for this one you probably can push on now and do the next step and if you want to please feel free but for me I'm going to leave that and I'm going to come back when that's dried in about an hour or so and do the next steps which will be the uh, masking tape and then the tops. 
So I will turn the camera on for that as well, of course. While I'm waiting for these to dry, let's move on to the next one, the next bit, which is fences, making your fence. The base, make the base for your fence the same shape as the basis for your walls. So you can see I have two that I cut earlier from my template, and that means that we can then join them together. Now, I'm not quite so sure about this base technique that they're using here. It doesn't look great to me, but whatever, we're gonna carry on. Making the fence posts. Using a craft knife, cut four strips out of your balsa wood. Now, I've never really gotten on with balsa wood, and I don't really actually have very much of it because it's hard to find here. So what I normally do for this is matchsticks. And I bought from a craft shop map strips that don't have any tips on, which is a bit easier because obviously when you have tips on, you have to cut them off. So it says each one should be waist high to a model in length. So your model is 28 millimeters. Well, it is for SPG. So we're going to do that, which is going to be to there. So we're going to do these two centimeters. So what I'm going to do is just use my knife. I do own a chop it, but I'm doing this in this way so that you can see how easy it is. I'm going to chop that up into two centimetre lengths, which will leave me one centimetre over, which is absolutely fine. And we're going to make a couple of fences here. So we're going to need to have, for each fence, we're going to need to have four uprights according to their plans, which is what we'll do. So there we are. And I'll show you how to square them off again in a second. So we'll cut four. There we are, split that off. And that's how easy as it is to cut the uh, matchsticks. You don't need to make a lot of fuss and hassle. Now I have some little metal files and what are we doing is just basically filing off the bottom to make them square. There we are. Very simply, very quickly do that. So we now have our fence pieces. So what we're going to be doing now is, now that we've got the fence pieces, I'm also going to show you, I use uh, coffee stirrers. Again, don't get on with balsa wood, can't get it anyway. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're actually going to split that coffee stirrer down the middle. So we can use one coffee stirrer to make one length of wood. And also so it looks a little bit more natural. So very, very carefully, hoping not to cut myself on camera, draw your knife down the center of the coffee stick. Don't worry about keeping it straight because we're trying to make it look rustic. There we are. And there we have one split coffee stirrer that is gonna be fine for us to use. You can use the file or use the knife to cut off those little scrappy bits. I obviously didn't cut it quite as cleanly as I meant to. So I'll just quickly trim that off. And on the other one. So yeah, so those that's going to be our cross pieces. So what we then do, seeing as we're only making one, let's move that out of the way, is we're going to put four dots of glue on this. And again, I'm going to do this in a... Um, more measured manner than they suggest. So I'm going to put the uprights in, wait for them to dry, and then glue the cross pieces on. However, that does mean that you do need to be a little more careful in terms of lining up. And what I'm doing is I'm using the corrugation as a guide. So I know that these four are going to be in perfect line. Now, another thing that I've done in another build, and which I will show you when I'm doing my more advanced version, is this is annoying. Trying to glue these down just with PVA without having a hole in the base is quite annoying. But in the interests of following their instructions, I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna sit here and make sure those stand up right. You can see what happens if you put too much glue, which is what I did. So smear that off and leave them to stand up. You know what? That ain't gonna work because they're gonna keep falling over. So I'm gonna smear that out, stand them up. It's just not a great idea. 
what would be better would be if I get my bradle and do a little hole for them to sit in and that way they're not going to fall over but also it's going to be a more stable build all round. Beard Clipper, making mistakes on camera so that you don't. Right, I will let that to dry. I will zoom in so you can see it. I will let that to dry and then I'll come back and I will stick the cross pieces on. It's been an hour or so and I'm still very unhappy with how flimsy these uprights are feeling. So what I've decided I'm going to do is I'm going to reinforce the base with some sifted sand which I have here. So I'm going to paint a line of glue and dip or throw sand on it and let that to dry in the hope that that will then build up around the outsides and actually provide some support. Um, on this one, I'm going to try a different technique because I'm looking at exploring and I'm actually going to use the pre-mixed poly filler, which I use quite a lot, and I'm going to build that up around the base. So I will be doing a sand mix on one and the polyfiller, which is here, uh, on the other. I will get that done now and uh, we'll see how well it works. Okay, so let's see if that is more effective and if they feel a little more secure after they've been left for another hour or two. It's been an hour or so, I thought I'd have a quick check back. This is dried and these are much more secure, so I'm gonna be able to stick the cross beams across. This one with the sand and the glue is still not dry and so it's still a little bit um, unsteady. So what I'm going to do is come to those in a second. I uh, just thought I'd do a quick update and show you where that was. I've come back over to my desk to check on that, but also because I'm going to put the, uh, I'm going to glue the, uh, do the rest of the gluing the walls together. So these PVA bits, the PVA has stuck, and you can see that I made a broken down wall section with some of the odds and ends, because I don't like waste. So that's, uh, that's ready. What it says is wrap the masking tape around the ends of the walls. So we're going to do that. I'll do that on one of these, and then I will uh, do the rest off camera, as per usual, because there's no point in you watching me doing repetitive actions. So we will stick some masking tape on. The masking tape does have a habit with me of not sticking. So I often end up going back multiple times and pressing it down over and over again just to make sure that it's actually got a good adhesion. It is designed not to be completely adhesive, so it's a bit funny that they use this. I think potentially because it can be painted over. Now because of the height of these, I'm actually going to put another little bit there just to cover the top. There we are and on the other end. So as I say, I will do this on these other two, but I'll do the next step now, which is going to be sticking the tops on. Now, if you remember, I cut a load of the foam core, a load of the foam, so these are gonna get stuck on top. You can see what I mean about the, about the masking tape not really adhering very well. It'll be fine when it's got things over the top of it. I'll probably plaster over these. So what we're going to do is we're going to stick those down. And we're going to do that very simply with PVA and balancing them on top and hoping that they adhere, which they probably will. So I'll do a bead of PVA, 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 a bead of PVA, easy for me to say, over the top of this wall, like so. Just quite a large one. There we are. And Simply balance these on top. 
and we need to cut one down very slightly because they're not quite the correct length. So trim that off and stick it on. There we are. So I'm now going to let that dry and I'm also going to do the other, other walls and I'll be back with the next step which will be to, or when these are dry, which will probably be to do the uh, cross beams on the fences. So as I say, what I'm going to do now is stick these cross beams in. Now I'm going to be doing that with PVA, um, which is just here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to prop it up on its side, like so, so that I can easily dab a bit of PVA on each upright. Now, it might be easier for me to do this with a brush, as you've just seen, that's all dropped off. So let's just do that with a brush, because we only need a dib. And that applicator, that bottle is a little bit big for that. There we are. Saved it with my brush. And what we then do is we take, and I do this again, I'm, I do this in very small steps. There we are. And then we have our other one, and I'm not going to be brushing or pushing this in. We'll get a little bit more PVA, put it onto here, and then we'll leave it to dry. And I will also do the other one with the sand as a additional securing, and I'll do that when it is dry, so when it is ready. So the next time you see this, Reaching over for my tweezers. The next time you see this, it will be, both of them will be to the same stage. I'm sure that you can't see what I'm doing because my arm went across them. So, pop it up, put that on. I'm actually going to need to have some tweezers, some, uh, you know what? This is what I'm going to do. So, I'm going to stick that on, and I'm going to get a clamp, and clamp it at one end. It wouldn't be a beard clipper build if there wasn't a clamp involved. And then the clamp and clamp it at the other. And then when that's dry, I'll come and put the lower rail on. So apologies if my arms got in the way there. Well, I was juggling a little bit, and that wasn't very professionally done, but then I'm not a professional. There we are. So we'll just pop some clamps on, clamp that in place. When that's dry, I will come along and I'll do the lower rail, and I'll do the lower rail with clamps as well. So hopefully you saw enough of that so you got the idea. Um, but that's what that looks like now, and that's a much better result. A bit later on in the evening, and this is going to be my last work on this today, you can see that the fence, the one fence, has got both of its bars on, both of its cross pieces. The other fence is just back here and I've only just glued the second one on so that's got its clamps on and is setting up but that's working quite nicely. They're much much more secure so I'm not sure that I really like what they're saying over there about just sticking it down. It probably won't survive very long on a, on a battlefield and getting knocked and then you'll have your nice terrain damage so I'd probably recommend, I think the best one was the uh, what was the polyfiller um, spackle if you're American that is, has been the best option so we'll put that to one side come back to that tomorrow finish it off for now we are going to have a look at these walls which are looking quite nice I think I'm quite impressed with how they look what I'm going to do is I'm going to have these brick shapes that I cut out and I'm going to stick them on randomly along the edge of these. So I'm going to do a couple now while you're watching and then I will finish off the rest and then that will be me for the evening because I have a very unsettled little bubba in the room next door which is why I'm talking a little quieter than I sometimes do and I'm going to go back into the lounge and do something else for the evening and not be in here so I don't want to disturb her. So what we'll do is we have just put some PVA on the plate and I am going to put a little bit more glue under there because it's a bit wibbly wobbly. I'm going to just spread it on in places and then put some bricks in. As simply as that. There we are. So I'll have some there, some there. And I'll also, as I say, that's a bit loose. Knocked it. 
and then we'll get our bricks and we'll stick them in. Try to make them straight, Andrew. Yeah. Obviously, bricks overlap. They don't go above. If they're going underneath, then they need to overlap. Well, that shot, apologies. If they're going underneath, then they need to overlap like that. So do bear that in mind. Otherwise, you'll have some builder somewhere looking at your wargaming terrain. And I say, that's not prototypical. And then you'll be sad. Oh, yeah. So this is actually quite hard to do on camera. So once I've done this, I will turn the camera off and be able to work on this a little less cack-handed, as they say. However, I think it's going to look quite nice when it is done. There we are. And then the last ones will be over here. There we are, just some bricks, randomly positioned. I'll finish it off on the rest of the build on the rest of the balls and I will show you what it looks like probably tomorrow now when they're all dried, set up and ready for painting. I've left these overnight and they're all dried on and also both of the fences are now done. So we'll come back to the fences a bit later on however I just thought I'd show you that that's relatively strong as you can see I can put a bit of force on that and that's obviously been strong since yesterday as you saw that so those two ideas have both worked but certainly quicker was the polyfiller the next step for the walls however is painting the wall which is step five and the last step so these are nearly done after undercoating the whole model black which is what I'm about to do paint it grey and then paint the details a very much lighter grey so what I've got here is some black paint I ran out of this pot, so I've mixed it up again, and this time added some PVA. Some people ask me why I PVA to everything. It adds a little bit of flexibility, and potentially means that something is going to be slightly more hard wearing, or at least in my opinion. And what we're gonna do, is we're gonna paint that all over the wall, just like so. So I'm gonna cover the whole thing in black paint. So I'm going to carry on with that and I'll be back later on to show you the, uh, the, the, what they look like and then do the next step of the painting. You can see top right that the walls have the black paint on them. So now we're going to do the next step which is uh, painting finishing touches. So it says paint the fence brown and the base green and when they are dry use PVA glue to stick flock to the base. Now once again I'm not going to paint the base green and I'm also not going to paint the wood brown because I want these to fit in with the rest of my stuff so I'm going to make use of the uh, pine wood stain borlak as they say here in Bulgaria and you can see that I'm just painting that on in the same way and this will give this will make this look like pine which funnily enough it already is but a little bit richer pine and then I'll be able to stain that on whether that to fit in with how I want it to look on the board of course you can paint your uh, wood brown if you want to but generally wood that's been outside is not brown generally wood anyway is not brown unless you have then stained it yourself or put some chemicals on it and certainly in middle earth i don't think they'd really have chemicals they might have burned it or done something like that to treat it but i think it's much more likely to be a natural wood color so this is what i'm going to do so i'm going to paint this on let it dry maybe do another coat and I'll invite you back when I come to do the weathering, if I do any weathering, to show you how I do that. But this is my, this is one of my best techniques, one of my favorites, works so well. You can get all sorts of different color wood stains and it means that you actually looks like wood. So I'm gonna carry on with that and I'll show you what it looks like when it is completed. Next, we're going to put some dark gray paint, just straight out of the box, out of the pot here, onto the all of this actually, I'm going to paint it all on because we're going to go over again with the lighter grey on the bricks. It says to dry brush it but I'm not going to worry about doing it too much dry brushed. It's just going to be 
like that. Now the actual top, because I've used the foam, is going to work quite nicely with the dry brush. So as always, I'll get this done on one and then do the rest off camera. That'll do for that one. I will now do the others and I'll be back in a short while with some more progress. That dried very, very quickly. So what I'm now going to do is use the lighter grey, trying a slightly different shooting angle, I hope it works out. And I'm going to paint this over the top of both the top tiles, like so. And also over each of the bricks, very, very carefully. And this may end up taking more than one coat, and I might even go for a lighter grey. But certainly this grey is going to be fine to start off with. So I'll get this done, see how happy I am with how it looks, and either come back and show you what I do differently, or finish the rest of the walls. I think that is going to actually be fine. So I'm going to do the rest of the walls. I will hold that up so you can see it a bit better. There we are, that's looking okay, isn't it? Um, I'm going to do the rest of the walls now and I'll be back with the final step on this build for the standard, which is going to be doing the bases. And so we enter the last mile with these official models, the official walls and fences. And I'm quite looking forward to getting these done because then I'm going to get stuck into my own version. I've done it this way around this time just because I wanted to clear the decks before I started my one. So I'm diverging slightly from the official, as I've said already, I think, in that I'm going to do my terrain paint, which I will link to below, and sifted sand before flocking. Uh, this is so that it standardizes with the rest of my terrain and looks nicer anyway I would always recommend you do this rather than painting the base green and then putting green flock in there which is just not going to look very natural or very good at all really so the way you do this is you take the terrain paint you paint it on nice and thick we can probably do each of the terrain pieces, do the whole of each of the terrain pieces at the same time because they're quite small but really you don't want to do much more than this area because it will start drying out quite quickly um, and it won't pick up the sand as much as you want and I have done a whole video on this as well and how I work this which I will link to in the description below but you probably won't need to watch it because basically what I'm doing now is what it is so yep you put as much paint on more than you think basically more paint than you think because you want to have quite an, uh, an excess then you get your sifted sand which I have on the floor just down here and what I do is I'm going to need to sift some more sand what you do is you scatter sand on it lots of sand on it just all over it as you can see just in the corner of shot and that's it simple as that so what I will do is I will go through and do that for all of these walls and fences and let them dry and I'll bring you back for the flocking step. We've reached the final step for the official um, walls and fences so what I'm about to do is do the flocking. This is pretty standard stuff so I will do this on one. You can see at the back I've also started preparing for my more advanced which isn't actually that much more advanced, it's just a, a different idea, uh, which I'll do and I'll come to after this. So, but I'm going to flock everything. So the three walls I've made, the two fences I've made here, and I'm also going to flock the base of the 
um, more advanced version of the build. However, just to quickly show you how I go about flocking, it's the same as I do on every single one. I have my terrain glue, which I will link to in the description below. I paint that on over the top of the uh, sand and I paint it everywhere, even if it's a place I'm not gonna necessarily put any flock. The reason I do that is that this will act as a sealant on the sand as well as securing down the flock that I add. So you paint this on and it's very watery as you can see. So it spreads nice and easily and hopefully doesn't disturb the sand underneath. With that done, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see it a little bit easier. There we are. Here is my flock. I will link to my videos below describing the two processes I go through. First of all, sifting, and second of all, actually making the flock. But this is homemade flock. And I always go for at least two colors of flock because life is not monochrome and the real world is not just one color. So what we'll do is we scatter and my technique is to scatter the dark on first and I'll do a very small amount in the gap. Put the dark on first, shake it off then get the slightly lighter tone here. And often I will go for three tones, but for these I'm just gonna do two briefly. So here we are. And again, just scatter it on. And that's it. It's as simple as that to apply the base and the flock. And you do it to your taste. Now, if you want to add static grass, obviously you can. If you want to add some more gravel, so that this looks like a gravel track coming through. You could very easily do that at this stage as well. But I'm gonna do sparse for this one. I'm not gonna to do too much at all. It's gonna be a, a bit of a bare landscape, I think. So there we are. That is flocked and it's as quick as that. So I'm going to go through and do that for the rest of the build. And then the next time I should be working on these and showing you a funky way to do hedges and fences or fences like I see where I live. This is the traditional way that they have of making, making fences around here, which is pretty cool. I love seeing it in the real world. So I'm looking forward to showing you how to recreate it in model form. Finally, we can get to the more advanced part of the build, or it's not really that much more advanced, but just another option. What you can see here are some pine needles, which I went out on a nice walk with my mother and Rosie and picked up off the ground a couple of weeks ago now. And they've been drying and they're now totally dry. So yeah, that's what I've collected. And what I'm gonna be doing, as you can see here, I've made some uprights, is I'm going to be wiring them in like so. And I will trim them. So I'll get them to the right length, like so, and push them down. And I'll weave them in, in alternates. So let's get another one. This is gonna be very simple to show you how it works. And what this will end up doing is creating a lovely woven fence effect. So if I go here and here, no, nope, the other way there and there and there. So I'm going to basically fill up from top to bottom and it will end up looking like that. And I'm not doing anything special here. I'm not even gluing it at this stage, if you notice. Because what I'll do is I'm gonna push all of these on, taking off the ends. There we are. And you can see that it's very simple process. So we'll fill that up. And then when that's filled up, what I will then do is I will then paint PVA on it, which will then stick it in place. So I'm gonna complete this while it's on camera, but what I will do is I will zoom in a little bit more so that you can see, there we are. I'll put some music on and we'll weave this first one in.
stayed very long at all. I could probably put another couple of rows on, and I might very well do. But I'll stop recording now because you're probably bored of the music, and that shows the technique. So there we are, that's how you can make really nice, very simple, basically free, which is the price we like, fences that look like they're made by traditional people who are just making use of found materials, and that's what we want to do. They're not always going to be made of bricks or stones, like these lovely ones are that were came from the magazine, they do look brilliant, and they're not always going to be split pen fence because maybe there's not very much wood around. But what there is, is um, reeds or whatever, and then you can make this kind of wattling fence. So I will ca crack on, and I'll be back to show what it looks like when both of these are completed. And there you have it. That didn't take very long at all, and it was really nice re uh, result, as you can see. I'm very, very, very pleased with it. What I'm going to do though, I think you could probably get away with this. If you were doing a model railway or something like that, you probably wouldn't need to worry about securing it because it is actually held in place quite nicely. But what I'm going to do, because these are going to get some handling, as I say, is just take some PVA and put it on just on the tops and paint down the, just to secure it in place a little bit here. Uh, the other thing that I've realised I've done on these, which is a bit annoying, but I'm not going to go back and change it now, is I forgot to paint and weather the uprights. So they look a little bit fresh. So maybe I'll try and go in there later on when I've got a little bit more time because I'm busy at the moment and so my hobby time is suffering. Uh, maybe when I've got a little bit more time I'll try and go in there and neaten those up and give them a little bit of a colour to make them look a little more realistic. But for now, that, as quick as that took, it was far quicker even than the techniques that they showed. All you had to do was get your uprights in and then gather together some, uh, have a nice walk. Getting out in the countryside is always good for us geeks. Have a nice walk, pick up some pine needles and weave them in and it just, it just worked. This is very uh, traditional technique for where I live. So I'll stop muttering now and I'll get these all glued in like I am doing and then I'll be back to sign off because that is another Another video done for the Battle Games in Middle Earth. More terrain. I hope a lot of you are building along. It would be wonderful to know that this isn't just me and my madness, but there are other people joining me in insanity as well. Insanity is a lonely place if you're on your own. Right, that's done. I'll come back in a second and sign off. So there you are, another one done. And it was quite a fun one. I didn't spend as much time on this as I did on the previous one, obviously with the enormous terrain and the 4x4 board. But I have had a lot of fun and I have come out of it with quite a lot of scatter terrain. So what we have is we have the walls. And I did one with a gap and I did two that don't have a gap. And they, they are looking very good. It's not good. I'll take some proper pictures um, and put them up after the video. I've also done the fencing. So there's one there and I've got another one here. So I did two fences. Um, and again, they look really nice and they're gonna look very good on the battlefield. And then finally, I did the slightly different technique. I'm gonna stop calling this one advanced because it's not advanced at all, which was the wattling type fences, which just look superb. I, I honestly, I know they're the ones that I am adding to the mix, but I honestly I prefer them. I think they look great. And I hope that you've really appreciated me showing you that as well, because it's a simple technique that can revolutionize how your table looks. And that's what this is all about. So I will thank you for now for watching. I will tell you that in two weeks time there will be another one of these videos where I'll build through the terrain tutorial in the next magazine. I think it might be trees and I have got a slightly different technique to show you for that as well. If you aren't yet a subscriber, please do subscribe. I love making these videos and I love seeing the number of subscribers climb. It's crazy above 360 now, which is just uh, out of my, beyond my wildest dreams. Uh, and if you do subscribe, don't forget that if you ding the bell on YouTube, you will get informed whenever one of my videos goes live. And I will sign off as I traditionally do by thanking you very much for watching Beard Clipper. Mm -hmm.